Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. How is your coloring progressing? I feel like this is the final stretch as I move on to the background. This took some time to complete, so I'll be saving the flames and other little details for the final video. If you are just tuning in and want to follow from the beginning, you can find the previous videos in the playlist linked above. Otherwise, grab your pencils and follow along with me. It doesn't matter where you start. Let's just start. I'm using all luminance for this part, but any pencil can be used. I just wanted to use them to get a better feel for them. I'm still not a fan, especially after I had the lead snap on a couple of them while sharpening them. They are way too expensive to waste to a sharpener. About here, it is easy to see that I am leaving a white halo around the flames of the candles. When I first began, I almost colored right up to the flame, but as I did, I realized this might make it hard to create a nice light halo around the candle. So I'm leaving the area white for now. My goal will be to color the flames up, add in a warm yellow halo, and gently feather the background into the halo. This will make it look like the light is washing out the color of the sky. If you are following along, just leave a small gap around the flame. The next video will deal with the flame as well as any other little bits left over. Anyways, onto the background. I wanted a sunset or sunrise background with the sky flooded red and orange. I began with the crimson aubergine along the top, arcing it down a little to on the sides. I started off trying to keep my ovals neat and tidy, attempting to fill in the tooth of the paper well, but my setup quickly made my arm tired and I got sloppy. Also, my pencil stalled quite quickly. I did keep a light hand throughout, so on subsequent layers, I'm not adding pressure, I'm simply going over the area again and again to darken it up. My next color is a pureline brown. It turns out it wasn't the most suitable of second colors. I probably should have skipped it, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. I was able to blend it into the other layers and it doesn't stand out. I worked the layer down about the same amount as the first layer and overlapped onto the first layer completely. Overlapping the various colors is going to be key here to making sure the sky and background become a uniform gradient of color. If I had jumped in too dark, it wouldn't blend. The sky and background would simply look like bands of color rather than a smooth gradient. After the brown, I used the crimson alizarin and overlapped onto the brown at least part of the way. This band is a little wider than the first two. I wanted to increase the size of the bands as I worked my way down the horizon. I worked up the next layer with the scarlet, again in light colors, and working my way around the wax in the buildings. When I remembered, I also added in the background color in any windows that looked through the building. I did forget to add some of them in on the first pass, but I did get to them by the end. I also built up those gaps with light layers. The sections began to work up a little faster, even though I was doing wider layers, simply because there is less background to work between the buildings. On to the cornelian. I worked it up trying to match up each layer from gap to gap. In the long run, it will not matter how precise I get this, but I'm anal enough to want to get it as close as possible. The orange came down most of the way with the gold bismuth finishing off the final layer. First layer now blocked in, it is time to go back and add more layers to get the background nice and rich. I changed my working angle, which changed up the direction of my pencil strokes. Unfortunately, I couldn't work the whole background with the new angle, so it kind of messed up the background with some pencil lines going one way and some the other. I didn't sweat it. I figured I'd be able to fix it somehow later. For the next layers, I made sure to overlap more and to also feather out the layer to avoid harsh lines where one color stops and another begins. I then began the next color with a light layer on the overlap and several layers in the middle, then another light layer to fade into the next color. This turned into more than four hours of background coloring time that I condensed down in less than 20 minutes. I might need to think about picking up some pastels or something to make the backgrounds go a little faster, but I can't afford that right now, so colored pencils will have to do.
Now to deal with all the roughness and uneven pencil strokes, I decided to try using the blending stick that came with the Luminance pencils. This is a solid stick of binder. I ran that over the backgrounds to smooth it out and mush the pigment into the tooth of the paper, since I didn't always have the sharpest of pencils this go-around. And yes, mush is going to be a technical term here. The first reason was the softness of the pencils made it go dull fast. The second reason being that my sharpener seemed to break a couple of the points, so I was afraid to sharpen and let the tips get far too dull because of that. The blender stick worked well enough to smooth out the color and mush it into the paper. Once I had it blended and pushed as far into the paper as I felt it would go, I went back over and touched up any areas that seemed a little thin on color or where the tooth of the paper didn't get quite filled in. For the most part, this is just spot filling with a sharp pencil to work in the pigment into the paper. For the next part, I'll be working on the rest of the details in the page as well as any touching up that might need to be done. I'm pretty sure the next video will be the last video for this page. Let me know if you've been following along and how your coloring is going. I'd love to hear about your progress. I'm also on Instagram where I post infrequently and Twitter where I post slightly more frequently. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or on my Patreon post linking this page, as well as on Twitter or Instagram. I have all the links below. I put, I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes as well as a list of equipment I have or will be using. If you use any of the affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you anything. I really want to thank you all for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. That will only happen if you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, happy coloring!